Parker House rolls are a favorite in most households, and this version using honey and wheat should be added to your repertoire. Their crisp, buttery exterior and light, tender interior are made more wholesome with the addition of whole wheat flour. It's very easy to make. Just add to one cup of warm water, one envelope of yeast. You can mix that up a little bit. Add one egg and three tablespoons of honey to the wet ingredients. The rolls are named after the Boston Hotel where they originated in the 1870s. Legend has it that a disgruntled hotel baker threw a batch of uh, unfinished rolls into the oven after an altercation with a hotel guest. These stories, and when the rolls emerged from the oven, they had a distinct folded pocketbook shape that made them light and puffy on the inside while staying crisp and buttery on the outside. And that's really what we're looking for when you make a lovely Parker House roll. So this is all mixed up. And now we are going to prepare just a few dry ingredients. One and three quarters cup of all-purpose unbleached white flour and one and three quarters cups of whole wheat flour. And then two teaspoons of coarse salt. So mix this up. It's necessary to make a nice smooth dough, but the kneading is not as important as just making sure that the texture is correct. So just mix until all the dry ingredients are incorporated with the water, and then add the butter, four tablespoons of room temperature butter. One tablespoon at a time. This adds a silkiness to the dough. Just knead until all traces of the butter disappear into the dough, and the dough pulls away cleanly from the sides of the bowl. You remove it to your counter, knead it into a soft ball. The dough is so nice, it just rolls on a clean surface, no excess flour, and this will develop the yeast. The dough will double in bulk. Uh, so just put this dough right back in the clean bowl, cover with plastic wrap, and put in a warm place for 30 minutes. After the dough has rested for 30 minutes, transfer the dough to your refrigerator and let rise for eight hours or up to 18 hours. So you can see that the dough has doubled in bulk. This is the right time to shape it into the rolls. So scrape the dough out of the bowl. Comes out pretty well. And roll this dough into a square about 18 inches. Don't use too much flour, which might toughen the rolls. And have some melted butter, four tablespoons of butter melted on the side, because that's what's going to get brushed on top of the rolls to get that nice crust. Here's what makes Parker House rolls so special. First, there's the butter. You add it to the dough, and you brush the rolls with melted butter before baking, and again, after baking. Secondly, they're folded in half to give them uh, that little pocketed signature appearance. So there, that's just about right. So cut this into equal pieces. If you're good, you can kind of eyeball it. And then each of these into five strips. There. And so now fold the rolls in half like that. And then they're put into a eight inch square baking dish, eight by eight. So there. Now brush these all over with butter and just cover these over. They're well buttered so they shouldn't stick to the plastic wrap and let these rise for about 25 to 30 minutes. Preheat your oven to 375, bake these until they're deeply golden, about 22 minutes. So hot out of the oven, brush with the remaining butter now they're shiny, lustrous, delicious. 
And that is Parker House Roll. If you want, sprinkle with a little bit of coarse sea salt and serve with just a little bit more salted butter. Not only do these taste better if you make the dough the night before, but this recipe can easily be doubled to feed a crowd. Should I show you what they look like when they come out? There's your Parker House roll, delectable. Just break off a little piece. Mm, so good. It's that whole wheat flour that really makes them taste even better. Enjoy. Mm.